English. People. This is how you should probably pronounce the names of German mathematicians and physicists. Papa's angry. No cats were actually harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> a, a mathematician called Karl Weierstrass. Kronecker Delta. Johann Karl Friedrich Gauss. Riketti Richati. The Hilbert space. On Bernard Riemann. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And Euler. Euler. As most of you might know, I'm a German boy, so I see it as kind of my duty to scold you guys a little bit. Bad, bad boys? No, no, not, not really. But I think it's quite cool to teach you guys a bit on how to pronounce the names of German mathematicians and a few physicists. And I would like to present you solution methods to Riccati, Riccati, Ricciati. The French equation, I seriously don't know how to pronounce his name. It sounds Italian, so why not call them just um, Italian boy, the French equations. <laughs> so here we go, starting off with the first one. So this first one is pissing me off the most because everyone is saying his name in the wrong way. He's such a great mathematician. He has been a great mathematician and well, no one seems to know how to pronounce his name in the right way. So his name is Leonhard Euler. and well, you just pronounce it like oil with a little R in behind, so Euler. He's not pronounced Euler or for fuck's sake, don't don't call him Wheeler. What the fuck? People really call him Wheeler sometimes. He's he's not some kind of racing car, I don't know, Euler's formula. No stop. He's just called Leonhard Euler. Surprisingly enough, most people pronounce his name correct. It might ring a bell. His name is Karl Friedrich Gauss. Gauss. So you see, um, it's really easy to say. Just don't get his first names wrong. Karl Friedrich. Listen and repeat. Karl Friedrich. <laughs> and yeah, well, um, if you say something like Gaussian integral or Gaussian elimination, you better say Gaussian elimination or something. It fits his name way better. Next up is David Hilbert. This also might ring a bell. He contributed a lot of good stuff to modern mathematics and you're going to use his theorems and stuff like this when doing quantum mechanics and well calculus analysis all the time. So he really was a great mathematician and what people get wrong with his name mostly is just the Hilbert in the end. So people say Hilbert in England or the USA, but you actually should say Hilbert. Albert Einstein. It's really easy to say and also most English people get this name right. So Einstein, some people say Einstein, I don't know why. Um, yeah, but I just want to put him on the list because some people still get his name wrong or they pronounce his first name as Albert, but you should say Albert. Speaking of theoretical physics, you might have heard of the name Noether before. And to be honest, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce her first first name, Amalie or Amalie. I'm not quite sure, but her full name would be Amalie Emmy Noether. So she also contributed a lot to theoretical physics and mathematics and you probably have heard of her before. Great theorems, great stuff. Keep it up. Proud of you. Next on our list is Vsauce Michael. <sighs> yeah, no, not a mathematician, not a physicist, but a really cool YouTuber. You might have heard of him. He's having a really small channel, but there's a small chance you might have heard of him, actually. <laughs> Next comes the guy with the ugly looking hair, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. And yeah, most people get his name right once again. So you guys are doing quite well there in the USA, in the UK, wherever you are, maybe also in your Indian call center. I really don't care. But yeah, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. If you are a frequent visitor of the Flammable Maps YouTube channel, you might have noticed that the Flammily right here has a real passion for solving integrals. And well, back then in the late, I don't know when he was born, there was a pioneer when it comes to integrals and his name was Georg Friedrich Bernhard Riemann. And surprisingly enough, most people get his name right in the US, in the UK, in your fellow mathematician's call center. 
and well, some English people like to pronounce his name like Riemann, so he's like the, I don't know, mathematical equivalent to Superman or Deadpool, but when I hear Riemann as a German guy, um, I just have to think about the belt right here, because this right here is a letter, Riemann you could say, and you don't want to pronounce his name this way, or otherwise you're going to get punished by the papa. <laughs> Props to you guys, I actually never heard the wrong pronunciation of his name, Felix Klein. I guess there is nothing you could possibly do wrong, but I'm still putting him on the list because um, everyone likes this weird guy from number file who loves to talk about Klein bottles. You know who I mean, <laughs> you just know it. Next on the list is someone who was really good with sets. And his name is, oh, what the fuck was his name? Georg Ferdinand Ludwig Philipp Cantor. So, that's quite a lot of stuff. You have to remember, just call this bad boy Cantor. And no, he's, he's not a cunt. He's not a cunt. His name um, is up here and you shouldn't say Cantor or something. Yeah, that's basically all that is to his name. Just pronounce him as Cantor and you are fine. Here's another cool one. Um, I first heard of his name when doing quantum mechanics. His name is Leopold Kronecker. And well, you might have heard of the famous Kronecker Delta before. It's a little uh, shortcut in mathematics you can use to either say something is one or zero if it has the same index, you could say. So that's quite a nice tool. You might have heard of it before. Yeah, and his name is just Leopold Kronecker. Next up is your boy Weierstress, Karl Theodor Wilhelm Weierstress. If you did analysis before or calculus, I really don't care what you call it, there in the US or something, you might have heard of his name before. He did some stuff together with Bolzano, maybe he's up next on the list, no I don't think so. It shouldn't be a German mathematician, Bolzano was French if I remember correctly. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, that's his name, Weierstrass, and no, there is no stress on the wire, it's just Strass on the wire. <laughs> Next, it's your boy, Max Born. Yeah, there's not much you could say wrong, Born, so there's even the English word, so it's quite similar. So you should be good. Did you just say Wheeler? Wheeler. No, no. His name is Euler. Remember his name, Euler. Most people get this one wrong. His name is Werner Karl Heisenberg, not Berg. It's not Heisenberg, it's Heisenberg. I can think of something that's equivalent in English, you could say, but just listen and repeat Heisenberg. Berg. Mohammed Ababu. <laughs> Here is another long dong, Max Karl Ernst Ludwig Planck. So don't pronounce his name as Planck. Most people just say Planck, constant for example. His name is Planck. Planck. Um, maybe there's something in English you could say that's kind of equivalent. If there isn't, just listen and repeat Planck. This guy suddenly popped up in functional analysis and my analysis class. So his name is Felix Hausdorff. There's probably nothing you could get wrong when it comes to his name. Just simply Hausdorff. Next up is another candidate, which name you might get wrong just because he has an E in his name. Heinrich Rudolf Hertz. Most English people say Hertz. Um, but this fucking hurts. So don't, don't say it. His name is just Hertz. Even in German you um, have two words, his name, Herz, and also you have the heart which you also pronounce as Herz. So it doesn't really make a difference in German, but it really makes a difference in English. Don't pronounce him Herz, pronounce him Herz. This guy pops up in differential geometry and stuff like this. His name is Hermann Minkowski and to be honest his Last name isn't really German, it's more of a Polish or Czech name, so 
well, but still he is listed as a German mathematician and you definitely have heard of his name before. So he is really famous and he has contributed a lot to differential geometry and all this crazy stuff. Read into it, it's quite interesting. Minkowski. Next up is the guy who probably has cut your hair before. He's a little barber, he's a little beautician. Julius Wilhelm Richard Dedekind. And yeah, he's probably most famous for the Dedekind cut, so it has to do with the construction of the rear numbers, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on this one. Sorry, I'm, I'm not too smart when it comes to mathematics, but yeah, Dedekind. It's as easy as it is, once again, as with most names. Next up is the guy who just talked about a special case of the elliptic jerk and turned it into the circuit jerk. His name is Johannes Kepler. Kepler's laws, they are just famous. If you had any kind of education, you have heard of him before. Kepler, there's also nothing you could get wrong with his name. Kepler! Next is a physicist, Josef von Fraunhofer. Next to my university, there's the Fraunhofer Institute of I don't know something. And well, he's German, so I'm putting him on the list. He definitely contributed to optics and stuff like this in physics. So he really did a lot of cool stuff. So remember him, Fraunhofer. Next up is Gustav Robert Kirchhoff. And even German people get his name wrong because some like to call him Kirchhoff. And this is not correct, because he has two F's at the end of his last name. And, well, you have to pronounce this with a short F in the end. He was also a physicist, he contributed to electricity, physics, you could say. So maybe you have heard of the Kirchhoff rules before. Then you might be familiar with the stuff he did. Next one has quite an unusual name, even for a German boy, maybe it's really an old name. His name is Rudolf Otto Sigismund Lipschitz. And there's probably nothing you could get wrong with his name, Lipschitz. And he contributed to analysis calculus. So maybe you have heard of Lipschitz continuity before. Yeah. It's just a definition of continuity with a little constant in it. Read into it, there's probably a Wikipedia article out there. Lipschitz. Next up is Wilhelm Konrad Röntgen. And his name is also not too hard to say. I don't know, maybe this Ö is quite unusual for English people, probably because it's something you only found in the German language. So his name is Röntgen. Last up is yet another physicist. We are going to end the session off with Hermann Ludwig Ferdinand von Helmholtz. He contributed, for example, to magnetostatics. It's a branch of physics. You might have heard of it before. It's part of electrodynamics. Yeah, and this is basically it. I hope this video enlightened you a bit. If it did, well, share the video everywhere if you want. You can also support the channel if you want. Either way, I really don't care. I hope you did enjoy this video and you learned a bit. That would be quite cool. Up until the next video, have a flammable day. See ya!